Welcome to the Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles. This is your boy Kevin Riles. So I'm coming. Wanted to make sure that I spent some time, just a couple quick minutes, uh, think telling you about the four things uh, that I think uh, are important for this upcoming year as far as 2019 for real estate trends. So DJ, hit that music, please. Support for this program comes from the Digital Broadcasting Network, presenting podcasts and web series from everyday people who have an extraordinary passion to make the world a better place. Welcome to the Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles. This is your boy, Kevin Riles. I'm coming uh, live from my office, well, not live, but uh, from my office today. Couldn't get into the studio, so I thought I would uh, uh, shoot a quick uh, podcast slash video uh, to kind of let you know, guys, what's going on. Today, I wanted to talk about kind of some trends to look out for the next 12 months. It's still uh, the beginning of 2019, and I think it's important uh, that you guys kind of know uh, what I'm thinking as it pertains to how the market is going to go. Uh, we had a really good commercial real estate market uh, last year, uh, and we had a decent uh, residential uh, market last year. And so I wanted to make sure that I spent some time, just a couple quick minutes, uh, think, telling you about the four things uh, that I think uh, are important for this upcoming year as far as 2019 for real estate trends uh, that I see. Now, let me also say that I didn't go and research these to the point where I'm copying somebody else's uh, real estate trends. These are just my personal opinion based on just knowledge level, what I saw last year, what I'm seeing this year, uh, honestly, even how my phones are ringing, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and so uh, real estate trend number one is that I think you're going to see the continued disruption of residential real estate, the continued disruption of residential real estate. What do I mean by that? Um, residential real estate, to a certain extent, if you're a realtor, to a certain extent, may feel like it's under attack. Uh, if you're an investor or just watch the market, you may see these things coming out that are just not what we're used to in residential real estate. And those things are, for instance, like iBuyers. Um, Nancy Sarnoff at the Houston Chronicle, if you get a chance, she does a, a podcast called Looped In, and she just did one recently on iBuyers. And iBuyers is kind of an old take on guaranteed sale programs. For those realtors out there that are listening, uh, you remember it used to be you could offer a guaranteed sale program for those that don't know. So if I list your house and it doesn't sell within a certain period of time, uh, then I could um, tell you that I will guarantee you that I'll buy it for X price, which may be a little bit less than list price, but you knew it, if nothing else, that you had that price guaranteed. Uh, and typically, you saw realtors who had a large volume, obviously had accumulated some level of capital, uh, and that could get bridge financing, and they would guarantee that price if they weren't able to sell the house in 90 days or 120 days or something of that nature. And if they weren't, and the client agreed, they would buy the property and then still list it for sale. Uh, uh, and you know, if they were able to make some margin on that, great. And so it gave the buyer a comfort. Well, I buyers is a, basically a new take on that where. Before you even list with a realtor, uh, you submit your property to see uh, what a particular um, uh, company would pay for uh, and pay for it for. Uh, and if they give you the price that you want, then you sell it to them and you don't have to worry about showings. You don't have to worry about all the things that happen when you list your property with a real estate broker. So I see that as a disruption uh, she talks about in that particular podcast. And, Again, I highly recommend that that podcast with Nancy Sarnoff looped in in the Houston Chronicle, uh, where a particular guy got the price that he wanted, didn't have to worry about it. And then she talks to a researcher that says that in, in a certain market where they kind of tested this theory, one of the companies, that it was like 5% of the, of the sellers uh, use that service. And so um, I can see where sellers might want to be able to do that. And so I think that's a, another, that's a disruptor. Uh, which is the popular term for how things are changing um, uh, in the residential real estate uh, market. I also see the more the, the more corporatizing of uh, residential real estate, where you have these large companies like Redfin and things of that nature that still that pay realtors on salaries uh, and from a real estate standpoint, but also offer discounts and rebates on the residential side. I don't see that in commercial, and the reason I don't see that in commercial because commercial transactions by and far are way more complicated and, and more structured than residential uh, uh, transactions. And then in addition to that, there's there's no one commercial MLS. So the data for commercial is different. 
the types of commercial transactions from investment brokerage to owner occupied, things of that nature. So I do think there are some disruptors, but I, I don't think um, uh, they're at the level of disrupting uh, as, as, as residential real estate. So that's my trend number one. Trend number two, I think interest rates will continue to rise. Um, Towards the end of the year, you saw the news. If you haven't saw the news, I'm letting you know that interest rates kind of ticked up a little bit. Now, granted, when I got into real estate 20 years ago, you were happy to get a seven and a half percent, seven and a quarter, seven point seven five percent interest rate. When my mom sold her house, when I sold my first one of my first real estate transactions was selling my own mother's house, and she bought that house in back in 1986 on a VA foreclosure. Her note still was based that she never refined for some reason was still 12.5%. So when I say rise, it's all relative. But every time real estate interest rates rise, I just closed a residential deal and I saw that the rate was like five and a quarter, five and a half. Uh, I can remember a couple years ago that it was, uh, you know, like 3.75 was probably the best that I saw on a 30 year uh, 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 note. So it's already gone up a little bit since, not a little bit, quite a bit since then. Uh, so, you know, are we going to get to the sixes, maybe sevens? I don't know. Definitely, I think in the late fives. And typically, interest rates go the opposite of, of uh, 10 year treasury yields. So, um, you know, we the, the Fed is pumping up rates, the inner uh, funds rate that banks lend money uh, to each other with. And so that has a kind of a trickle down effect. I'm seeing the slowing of the market. Uh, I, I really am on the residential side specifically, especially at price points above 300,000. That's what I'm personally seeing, um, that those properties are staying on the market a little bit uh, lower. Now, let me caveat that with saying that's what I'm seeing here in Houston. Uh, so especially resale properties, uh, anything above 350, 400,000, depending on where it is, if it's a resale, not a new construction, I'm seeing a slowing down. Uh, and then, so that's my second, interest rates will continue to rise. Um, number three, builders, builders will continue to win. Right now in the Houston market, builders are winning left and right. And I think the psychology of it is if I'm going to spend this amount of money, the buyer is thinking that I am going to be in a position to be able to purchase uh, a new construction home where no one's used the toilets and, and the flooring is new. Uh, and so uh, builders continue to win. They're outpacing uh, folks that are trying to resell their house in the neighborhood that I live in, which is a master plan community. Um, the builders, uh, you know, the sales counselors, if you talk to, I ran into a sales counselor the other day at the coffee shop and they had a record year, this particular builder. And so, um, whereas I, I know some realtors uh, in the area that are having a little problem moving their inventory. So uh, to me, builders in the Houston market specifically will continue uh, to win. And so if you're a buyer out there, may consider looking at a, at a uh, resale home. Uh, you might be able to get a little bit better deal right now. I'm not saying it's quite a buyer's market, uh, but it definitely is is uh, is different. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, I would say on the commercial side, what you will see uh, is you will see a continued development of industrial properties. This Amazon effect is real. And when I say the Amazon effect, I mean this distribution warehouse, um, this, this whole new economy of, of shipping is in logistics is real. And so uh, I did more industrial, excuse me, deals last year than I've ever done in my professional career. And I'm really not a huge tenant rep guy, although tenant rep mean I, I, I uh, represent tenants looking for industrial space. Although last year I did, you know, quite a few deals and decent sized deals. So I would really tell those of you that are looking for possible triple net investments. And I've talked about that in my previous uh, podcast that this would be a, a great time to buy um, you know, in industrial business parks or small industrial buildings, because what's happening is the larger guys are getting um, these large industrial buildings, and then that's kind of having a trickle down effect as far as the smaller guys having to serve that. And I don't see that going anywhere, uh, especially here in Houston, since we are a port city. So those are my four real quick uh, real estate trends for 2019. Uh, in the next coming weeks, you'll, uh, we'll be back to our normal scheduled program in the studio and guests and things of that nature. But wanted to kind of get those things out because I've been thinking about those things myself as I plan for 2019. So as always, please subscribe, please rate, and please tell your friends about the Real Estate Life with Kevin Rounds. And I'll see you guys next week. Hey, thanks for listening as always. Do you have questions about any of the topics I'm talking about? If you have questions, let me know. 
email me at kevin at kevinriles.com. Again, that's kevin at kevinriles.com. I'm going to do a podcast just on the questions uh, that you guys are sending me. So feel free to send them to me. Again, that's kevin at kevinriles.com. 